Sam and Ken are my guests this afternoon during fans on fan favorite segment. Coincidentally, both of them are Man United fans, and I won't tolerate them to harass me on the show <laughs> with you know bragging of how they will win Europa League title this season. Sam, good to see you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm a guy who follows everything, so I've been doing good. It's been a good week, a good week where Man United have done the thing, scoring six. So it means that definitely in the final and a chance for Laguna Socia to win a trophy. That's why you put on a jersey today. You guys have yes. been always getting scared of uh, going public with your <laughs> club affiliations. No, I guess right now we are in the best form, really, uh, and we are doing okay. So. Let's wait and see, you know, Manchester City are about to win a title, we have to stop that. Ken, good to see you too as well, man. How yeah. are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. It's been a great week, as you've said, uh, with the big win. And also a lot of tasty football in the past week. And also tomorrow, big games all around. Yeah, it's, it's a great time to be a football fan and pundit. Yeah. I saw you taking to one of your social media platforms, uh, <laughs> uh, congratulating Pogba, Fernandez and Cavani for putting up world-class performances. Yeah, yeah, you know, big players show up in the big occasions and in all games and their performances that night were absolutely fantastic, especially in the second half where they just blew Roma away. It was, it was amazing from and them. For your information, it's Brogba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know about that. So, let's start with one of our talking points. Mm. Uh, Julian Nigelsman mm. now headed to Ban Munich to replace hmm. Kovac. Yeah, no, to from, replace Flick, yeah? Yeah, yeah, to replace Flick from, yeah. from uh, RB Leipzig. Leipzig. Yeah, I guess it was a move everyone expected it to come through. And the big thing was the price tag that was put on him because Leipzig wanted around 25 million euros for him to go to Bayern Munich. And then there was lots of backlash coming in from football fans about how Bundesliga is a farmer's league, that they're getting the second best manager to go to the top club in Germany. But then I, I believe it's something that Julian Nagelsmann has always been dreaming about. You know, when you have such a manager who's gone through the ranks, started at Hoffenheim, made them to qualify to the Champions League for their first time. RB Leipzig last season, he saw them get into the quarterfinals. And now with a chance now to win the Bundesliga, which is not done at RB Leipzig, you'll love to see it. And one Im interesting thing is to see whether, uh, I know Dyer Tupamecano is going to Bayern Munich. It's going to be interesting to see how he's going to use the young boys in there because he's done it with RB Leipzig. Man, we thought that, you know, Bayern Munich has been dominating German football, winning yeah. Bundesliga titles uh, year in, year out. And we thought that maybe the first rising state of RB Leipzig will give much needed competition to uh, the Bavarians. But now it looks like they're raiding yeah. them because Supermecano, just like he said, headed to Bayern, uh, Bayern and yeah. also Chelsea acquired the services of Timo mm -hmm. Werner. Yeah. So it looks like, you know, Leipzig is being humiliated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, especially the, the Flick and Upamecano one, they're selling their players and their manager is going to Bayern Munich, the, whom they have been chasing to try to get, a, to wrestle the Bundesliga from them, and they have not been able to. I think uh, mm -hmm. if this was in any other league, that move will, will not have happened. Uh, for example, look at when uh, Suarez went to Atletico Madrid. The move was met with backlash because you cannot sell a player of that quality to your direct rivals who you are fighting for the trophy. And, and they've just done that with Upamecano, who is a really great defender, and uh, Hansi Flick, who, has, who really knows how to get his teams playing. And he'll be working with top, top class players, and Bayern are just going to, to be dominant once again under him. That's what I think. And again, for RB Leipzig, you know, that thing about they are now being taken back, I guess it's not the case because they brought in Jesse Marsh, yeah. the coach from yes, RB Salzburg. Yeah, and he's done a very good job. He's one of the guys who's gone through the ranks. You know, whenever you follow that Red Bull ring, you have to follow the RB Salzburg and then you get back into the Leipzig team. And what is interesting is that he's meeting some of his old boys in there. I expect and I really hope it's going to happen that he's going to come along with Patson Daka, who is now performing very well at Salzburg for the Zambian. So you look at the scenario, he'll get Alexander Solo in there, the likes of Huang in the team, Brand Brob is coming in from Ajax. I still think it's going to be a big team to battle it out with, but the problem is going to be their defense because right now you're talking about Dayato Bambekano leaving and also Ibrahima Konate, who is now being linked to Liverpool. So that's one place they need to check in when, they, when the season starts. Champions League football midweek, Real Madrid, you know, against Chelsea, I slept at around 80th minute because the game 
looked yeah. very boring mm-hmm. and lacked oomph that you know everyone looked forward to. I don't know. Did you follow the proceedings? Yeah. And can you attribute that to the formation Zinedine Zidane put up? Yeah. Three five two. Everyone was shocked to see Real playing with uh, three defenders, <laughs> and uh, they still considered a goal which could have been stopped. I think. Uh, but I think in the second leg he'll approach it differently. He'll have many of his guys back. Uh, the one will be missing will be Carvajal. Yeah, he's injured. out for the season. But Ramos is expected to be back. The usual trio of Cruz, Casemiro, Modric are fit, and I think they'll perform better in the second leg because in the second, in the in the first half yes. of the first leg, Chelsea absolutely blew them apart with playing the long balls. It's just poor finishing wasted Chelsea because each time. Kante was running forward with the ball, uh, Vana, they just seemed like the defenders were loose, they were far apart. And uh, it's it's not like Real Madrid to defend badly under Zidane, but they were they were defending very badly. But in the second half, Casemiro dropped deeper a bit, and uh, they, they managed to see the game out. I think 1-1 one, one is a fair result for Real Madrid, because going to Stamford Bridge and getting a goal, it, it will really... It, it won't be that easy, but I think they can get it. World-class performance from Colo Kante. Another moment he, he proves his critics wrong that he's capable of delivering at the big stage. Of course, being voted as UEFA Champions League Player of the Week. What do you expect from him going into the return leg? Of course, uh, marshalling into uh, that midfield of Chelsea, considering that Real has also one of the best midfield a trio in the world. Yeah, I agree with everything they said there about it being a fair result, first of all. And for me, actually, it wasn't... How a, fair? It's a fair result for, <laughs> for Real Madrid. Now we go. Yeah, I know that because, I mean, for Real Madrid, it, it would have been worse. For oh, example, okay. you look at Timo Vana, the chances he's missed there. You somehow feel like it's an assonance whenever you hear the commentator saying, Timo Vana's got to finish that. It happens every time that he's not finishing those chances. And... It's going to be some few questions to Thomas Tuchel and who is going to start as a striker, probably Tammy Abraham or Olivia Giroud, but I know the kind of runs that Timo Werner makes into that team. But then for Real Madrid, starting a back three, I expected it because he's used it a, a little time in the, in the La Liga. And this time round with Ramos coming back, I hope that maybe he's going to revert, to revert into a back four. The question about Kante, I, I think that game is going to be on Tuchel now because you can bet your money that Real Madrid are going to score Stamford Bridge. That is going to happen because now you've got Eden Hazard, I believe, is going to be starting in that game and Vinicius together with him. So for Kante and Chelsea, I don't know what their game plan is, whether they want to see out a nil-nil or they want to go out and win. But one thing I know with Real Madrid is when Chelsea plays the low blocks, then Real Madrid are going to play those balls with Modric and Cruz, who are not seen the first leg. They are just going to blow Chelsea apart. Do you, think, do you think Zinedine Zidane should stick to the lineup that started against PSG, where he placed Nacho and Militao at the center? Because Sergio Ramos is coming back from injury and he will complicate <laughs> the situation. Yeah. Is the coach in dilemma right now in terms of you know, his lineup? He's yeah. expected to select. I don't think uh, he will be in a dilemma because uh, Zidane favors Varane and Ramos, really. I think that's his favorite pairing and that's the best pairing because Ramos uh, brings. With him, he brings a lot of uh, the, the the attackers of the other team will be wary. They know it's Sergio Ramos, an experienced guy, and also his uh, his teammates will feel a little bit safer because they know they have a rock, a leader at the back. So I think he should go back to a flat back four. If they have uh, the change at bed is have Mendy, have him back at the full back position, and uh, the the other the right back whoever he wants to play there. As long as they have their centre back position in check, I think Real can 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 win the game, and also because they'll be protected well by Casemiro, who Ngolo Kante had a great game, but you, you can never write off Casemiro, you know, he, he's a proper, proper CDM. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, French money backs Paris and Germain in another semi-final yeah. started very well against Manchester City, but can we say that they were complacent during the second half? City coming from behind to score two away goals? Yeah. My goodness. Are, are there bid to advance to the final done? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. Or think we so. can't get conclusive. <laughs> we can't get conclusive because two one, two one is not that big of a margin, you know. Yeah, and PSG have the players to to really reel this back from City. They have Neymar and Mbappe, who you can never write off because they are top top world class players. And 
I think what they they just need to settle and play as they did in the first half. Just go at Man City because you saw City were rattled when PSG were playing their football. City were rattled. There were little there were mistakes. The the City, PSG looked like they are going to score the, a lot of a lot of times when they are going forward. But in the second half, they sort of sat off and allowed City to impose themselves on them, and that's why they they lost. And I think that that will be a great game. It's still still in the balance, yeah. Pep Guardiola missing out on the title. It's been elusive mm -hmm. for him for several years since his move from Barcelona, Barcelona to Bayern and now to City. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is this time for him to prove that he's the greatest manager, club manager globally? Wow. Maybe at the moment he is, but it's so hard to write, to write Alex Ferguson off, you know. Alex Ferguson has been the greatest manager. Of course manager not of all times, yeah, currently. Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess it was a really interesting game because Whenever you hear that thing about uh, it's a game of two halves, I think that much showed you what a game it was because in the first half PSG did what Manchester City literally does to every team so far and they were able to press them very well but in the second half Manchester City realized that we can actually play our game and they are so devastating Manchester City right now because they can keep the ball, they can make angles and they're just going to leave you chasing shadows. I mean, the second half you didn't see Mbappe, you didn't see Neymar in, the, in, in that game. And then the red card might have compounded the issue a little bit. Uh, I was looking at the lineup today. They are playing against Crystal Palace and he's been able to rest eight of his players who played in that game. So it's the beauty about even having the big score that you can be able to rotate these players so that they can be fresh again against PSG on Wednesday, I guess. And again, another thing is that Mauricio Pochettino is a master of comebacks. You saw him do that with Spurs against Ajax. So it's never too early to try and write them off in this kind of a fixture. I believe they still have a shot in it. And even looking at Kylian Mbappe after the game, he didn't look that surprised really because he knows that it's maybe confident. they have something. Yeah. So tomorrow, Super Sunday, uh, City, uh, not City per se, mm -hmm. United, mm -hmm. have against Reds of Liverpool, of course, Reds as we speak right now, chasing uh, Champions League football, top yeah. four finish. I don't know whether it's possible right now, considering the number of games remaining. United looks like they're cementing their second place finish. Of course, City are the yeah. <laughs> incoming uh, no. champions of Premier League. But I don't know, what do you think about that clash? Uh, United-Liverpool will, will always be a big game. Yeah, as in... Uh, no bragging matter, rights? Yeah, bragging rights. And uh, the, the, the two biggest clubs in... In England, trophies and longevity and at the top, you know, and mm -hmm. history. It will always be a big game, whether they are sixth or eighth. But this, this, this one is bigger because if United beat Liverpool, they might uh, lose their chances of being in the top four, you know, and that will be sweeter for my United fans and everyone. So, and also United need this win, I think, to cement their place. In the top four, second is not yet confirmed. But if they need, they want to be in the top four, they need to win this, and uh, they won't, they won't fall to fifth. It's going to be a big game. It's going to be a big clash. Yeah, let's just hope it entertains. In the event United loses to Liverpool, I think City will be handed the title, right? Yeah, that yeah, is. Would that be an you. embarrassing situation for United? Of course, a title getting handed to their rivals. main uh, City rivals. Yeah, without them kicking a ball because we are, we are putting the mathematics that if they win against Crystal Palace and Man United loses, they win. But then also even for Liverpool, I don't think they'll be feeling that well because they've helped them to win the title where we all thought they were going to be their main opponents. But then coming to this game, I don't know whether there's much buzz about this clash. I don't know because Liverpool have not been it's good. Low profile, right? Yeah, I, I feel like it's been that way for like the Too last much three hype years. Around it. Yeah, because it's either Man United are underperforming or Liverpool are, and this season it's Liverpool who are underperforming, Man United are in second place. Well, for Klopp, he hasn't won at Old Trafford for the last six matches. The last three have been draws and a loss for him. I want to see the kind of selection he comes up with in this one because Phillips, I guess, is back, Nathaniel Phillips, so maybe we could see Fabinho get back into the midfield. And also another key battle, which for me, I think even Gary Southgate will be wanting to see it would be a look show playing against Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think it's going to be interesting to see that how it, it goes. And then for Man United, I think only a few changes. Maybe Cavani, I guess, he will start in this one. I don't know the thing about Rashford. He doesn't look so fit. And so probably we'll have one of the good games where we have some substitutes coming in. We are having Greenwood on one side and Diego Jota on the other. Whether he starts a front four, I don't know. But it's, it's going to be interesting, really, but not much in stake. Finally, players and even clubs uh, uh, 
taking to social media to express their frustrations yeah. over rampant online abuse and they have said most of them will uh, ditch social media for good until you know uh, measures are put in place to curb the same i don't know yeah. good solution considering what we're seeing with the fight against racism you know kneeling down <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is it a genuine fight to end this monster? Yeah, I think uh, what can really fight racism is the social media companies themselves. Um, Instagram, Facebook, they, they, the comments are seen by everyone. They are posted on their platforms, but they, talk, they take no initiative of finding out who these guys are or burning them. They racially abu abuse players, managers, but still have their account the next week to do the same. So uh, they need to be pulled down. They need to be completely. pulled down by the social media companies and governments really need to find ways to to suspend and ban these individuals so as to really clean out racism from football. Yeah, I was listening to the now Premier League Hall of Fame Thierry Henry talking about it and he was really hard on those kind of people who come out and bash you and I guess it's something that has gotten a lot of support because it's, only, it's not only football, you've seen the broadcasters, you've seen cricket, boxing. Formula One is the only issue I have a problem with because we only have 12 drivers who've done that but the other eight have not done it and the Premier League and the Formula One is still continuing with their posting. So about the, how they take their stand on, I guess that's on his point up for, for debate. But then the, the thing I was talking about here some weeks ago, we were talking about Wilfred Zaha talking about taking the knee being just a gesture yes. without anything being done. I guess it's still the case. Well, I don't know whether it's going to be of much help right now, but it's always good to take a step. And much pressure is definitely on the social media companies, as he said, because there are three things that they are planning to do. Number one is to protect the users. Number two is to verify, and number three to make sure that there is anonymity that is gotten out of this social media because those anonymous people are the guys who come in and bash you. So I really hope it's going to succeed. And my my director Grant Kiman on my neck that I finish up the show. Before I do, you are parting shot. Your final submissions with regards to nominees for Hall of Fame. When Mark Rooney missing out. <laughs> quite you know a reaction from football enthusiasts globally over his exclusion i don't know besides Rooney, who else do you think deserved inclusion and probably the uh, you know prominent omissions uh for me i just stick to Rooney <laughs> <laughs> because uh, i saw they said that he had to be retired by august 2020 yeah, but still uh, when, when you talk about premier league and the best players, uh, I feel like Rooney and Shearer should have been the first two because they've, they have the most goals and longevity in the league. You know, they've stayed Premier League through and through, uh, apart from Rooney going to US in his final seasons. And, and he's way in Rooney, you know. Man he's United, way Rooney, yeah. he's way, Man United have been the most dominant team in the PL. I, I think he should have been amongst the first two, regardless of when he retired. <laughs> Yourself, you well, read from the same script? Uh, not Finally. really, because I understood the reason why he's been kept out, because he's still being active in the game. He, he hadn't retired at that time in August 2020, so I agree with that decision probably coming later. But then it was good to see the other list of nominees that have been brought up, and I was able to vote for my six. And so it's wonderful to hear even the stories of Thierry Henry and Alan Shearer whenever they come to talk about how they entered into football. Thierry Henry just wanted to make his dad happy. So interesting, and let's see who is the others to be nominated there. Definitely, it's been a good show, man. But uh, I think due to public demand, we need some extension of a few minutes. It's been, you know, quite a great conversation this particular afternoon, starting from, you know, uh, sports legislation to matters rallying and now to international football. Just talking what is happening as far as sporting uh, world is concerned, both local and beyond. My name is Max Wasika. Very good afternoon. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming through. Hopefully next week we will be available to continue with this conversation, right? Yeah. And, you know, uh, good work to our technical crew for ensuring this is a success. And let's keep talking about sports. Hashtag touchline Y254 ahead of Liverpool against Man United. What do you think the conversation continues? Stay tuned and have a good afternoon. God bless.